Back in 2020, on their annual battery day, Tesla and Elon Musk sold every electric vehicle enthusiast a dream. They introduced the new 4680 battery cells that were meant to be the next great leap in the EV revolution spearheaded by Tesla. More than two years later, Tesla has more questions to answer and the latest developments have left many to wonder. Will the 4680 cells really live up to the expectations? The 4680 battery cell was meant to fuel Elon Musk and Tesla's goal of making EVs affordable, high-performing, and more commonplace. The promise was justified considering the advantages advertised for this ground-shattering technology. The first thing to know about the new cells is their bigger size. 4680 cells signaled a shift away from the commonly used 2170 battery cells in Tesla vehicles. The bigger cells bring in some big advantages. They can provide six times the power and five times the energy density of the 2170 cells. Due to the bigger volume, Tesla needs lesser parts and can still provide a bigger punch. With 2170 technology, Tesla needed 4,400 cells to power a Model Y. Each of these cells had four parts that needed to be welded to create a usable battery pack. So a single car battery would have 17,600 points. A shift to 4680 reduces the number of required cells to just 830, less than 20% of the previous battery pack. Tesla's design changes mean that there will only be two weld points on every 4680 cell, so a battery pack will only have 1,660 points, a fraction of those currently in use. This will lead to considerable cost savings. The current Model Y's 2170 battery pack cost Tesla $11,000, but that same battery pack using the 4680 cells will save Tesla a third of the money, taking the cost down to $7,400. But that is not all. Once Tesla starts mass production, the total cost to produce a battery pack will be halved going as low as $5,500. Going by the current cost of a Model Y, a shift to 4680 would allow Tesla to lower the cost of its cars by 8%. However, to really leverage the gains of the bigger cells, Tesla requires successful deployment of the dry coating technology, which helps eliminate several steps of the manufacturing process. In 2019, Tesla acquired San Diego-based Maxwell Technologies. The company was already making ultra-capacitors using dry coating, and Tesla had hoped to implement the same for its batteries. Right now, the widely used method in battery manufacturing is the wet coating process. Tesla has been using it in the 2170 cells for years, but the method is complex and time-consuming. In this method, the battery electrodes are coated by a mix of electrode powders and a toxic binder solvent. Once coated, the electrodes must then be dried in huge ovens. The toxic solvent is then evaporated, recovered, treated, and recycled. This whole process takes up a lot of time, space, and labor. It also requires electricity and some advanced machinery, making this stage quite expensive. Musk's idea with the 4680 cells was to eliminate the wet coating process altogether by going for dry coating from the start. At Battery Day, Drew Baglino, who had been Elon Musk's trusted sidekick for the new battery pack, said, Skip that solvent step and just go from dry mix to coat. Musk and Baglino estimated that dry coating will reduce the manufacturing footprint to one-tenth of what it was at the time. They also claimed that energy consumption would also be reduced to just 10%. Now, all of that looked intriguing in theory, but implementing the vision has proved to be a different gravy. If Tesla really wanted to achieve its savings goals, it needs to scale up massively. And that's where Tesla has faced constant obstacles. Tesla's problems with production have been well documented. Elon Musk has lamented about his proverbial production hell in the past, and it seems like he's facing the same with the 4680 cells. Sourcing raw materials has been a regular concern, and dry coating technology prevents further bottlenecks. Elon Musk has expressed his desire to start mass production of battery cells by the end of 2022. However, a recent report from Reuters disputes that. Industry experts, some of whom, according to Reuters, are closely associated with Tesla, believe that mass production may not even start in early 2023. According to the report, small volume production has not posed a problem, but every time Tesla tries to scale up, they get too many rejects. 
Tesla's cost-saving estimates have also not materialized because the yield has remained on the low side. Maxwell Technologies' ability to take on a project of this scale has also come under question because, so far, the company has only used the technology on ultracapacitors. EV battery electrodes are much larger and thicker, so coating them at a large scale has been a challenge. Sources believe that, at this point, Tesla is only halfway towards its desired cost-cutting goals. For now, Tesla can only hope to cut the Model Y's battery cost by two to three thousand dollars. However, most of that comes from the design alterations in the 4680 cell. The bigger size allows for some cost and performance efficiency, however. The dry coating challenges are far from a solution. Recent developments have also raised a very important question. Did Tesla promise too much from the 4680 cells? It should be noted that this is not the first time that problems have surfaced with the dry coating technology. Last year, at one of Tesla's quarterly earnings calls, Musk himself downplayed expectations. The dry coating process did not seem to be working at the time. Beglino told the listeners that Tesla was searching for a simpler engineering solution. However, Elon Musk later expressed the opinion that dry coating wasn't too important after all. We don't want to overemphasize dry cathode. Maybe it's 10 or 15% of the cost improvement or something like that. Musk did go on to say that 10% was still a big deal, especially when they're trying to make hundreds of gigawatt hours a year. However, it wasn't a messiah. So the message probably was that dry coating may not happen at all. But there is more that hasn't happened as Elon had hoped in 2020. At the time, Musk talked about a revolutionary silicon anode and a high nickel cathode. However, the reality is quite different. The first teardown of Tesla's 4680 battery cell revealed that the company was using a graphite anode instead of silicon, a feature used in most existing batteries. Tesla also promised a cobalt-free high nickel cathode, but as it turns out, they are still using the traditional 811 nickel magnesium cobalt mixture for the cathodes. Tesla was probably forced to stick with traditional materials because of soaring raw material prices or simply because of the supply chain bottlenecks in the wake of the Russia-Ukraine war. Whatever the cause, the unveiling has largely been underwhelming. However, that does not mean that there's no reason to be optimistic. 4680 cells are still superior to the current ones, and going by Elon Musk's statements, we may still be in for a surprise by the end of the year. Despite the constant setbacks, Tesla began making 4680 dry cells this year. Starting from a pilot factory near Tesla's Fremont, California production facility, the production has moved to its new headquarters in Austin, Texas. Tesla will continue to face challenges with ramping up production as the company tries to overcome the technical hurdles. However, the overall production of new cells will cross 1,000 battery packs per week by the end of 2020. Tesla has chosen Giga Texas for building 4680 batteries. A major reason for that is the Inflation Reduction Act announced by the U.S. government, which offers tax incentives on EVs manufactured in North America. Tesla stands to gain billions from the package, so even though Tesla will ramp up electrode production at Giga Berlin, the company will ship these to Texas and complete the manufacturing process there. As for the challenges holding Tesla back, Elon Musk remains optimistic and gave some reassurances at the quarter two earnings call. When something is revolutionary, it's a lot of unknowns that have to be resolved. So we're confident of resolving these unknowns, but it's very difficult. We are making rapid progress on that point. So the first order of business is really get the basics right, get to high volume and high reliability, and then very rapidly iterate within that to enhance the energy density and reduce the cost of the cell. Elon Musk and Tesla would want to overcome the challenges sooner rather than later to fully leverage the potential of 4680 battery packs. Bringing the cost of a Tesla down is just one aspect of this innovation. A much bigger goal for Tesla would be to build on this success and set a strong base to meet its goal of selling 20 million Teslas annually by 2030. That is an insane goal, but Elon Musk thinks it is very realistic. If successful, Tesla will become a bigger automaker than Toyota and Mercedes combined. But how does Elon plan to make it possible? Check out this video to find out.